guys, welcome. Uh, we're trying a new venture. I'm Scab, uh, Choir Boys Cutlery, and I'm here with my partner. What's up, guys? This is Joe Lav. I'm from uh, Steel Forge and Fire, Sword and Knife. Welcome, 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 everybody. Glad you guys are in. Hey, this is a new venture uh, that Joe and I are trying, and we hope you like it, uh, because whether you do or not, we're going to do it. So, Joe, kind of lay out what we've talked about, if you would, and then we'll kind of jump in together. Uh, what we both have a shared vision. Let me say that up front, but I think Joe will be better to articulate it. So basically, what we're trying to do, guys, with this video, uh, we're trying to, like, like, like Scab said, we're trying something out new where we're going to open up a discussion of swords and knives. I, I mean, obviously, one, you know, Scab's specialty is knives of all sorts. My specialty is swords. Uh, we're trying to uh, kind of open up a discussion back and forth of uh, latest trends in knives, latest trends in swords. I think we're going to really tap on many different subjects uh, as far as uh, legal carry uh, options for different states. You know, I can sp specifically, uh, specifically speak about like New York. Uh, Scab can specifically speak about where he lives in Florida. And, you know, we're going to re really kind of touch on anything. Best deals for knives, best deals for swords, uh, different experiences we have with different manufacturers and forges. And I think it'll be a nice little discussion uh, factor back and forth um, that we can kind of just uh, make up some good videos with it. Now, what we're trying to do is make it into a podcast eventually um and if you guys out there have any suggestions as far as uh podcasts or maybe some servers that you've had experience with that are good or free that'll be the best thing <laughs> but uh we want we're definitely open open ears here we're learning i mean we're trying to get into the proper podcast uh, venue with that so we definitely want to hear your comments on that but that's, uh, we're trying this out right now, see how it works out. We would love to hear your comments to see what you guys think of it, how it, it, how it kind of made, how it was kind of all worked out. We may, you know, continue with this for a little while and then eventually get into a podcast or stay with this at all. I mean, it's kind of sky's the limit right now. So we're kind of really just, you know, riding the waters and see what works and what doesn't work. So how does that sound, Scab? Does that sound right? Yeah, that, I, I think that covers the essence of it. Uh, we want to do something that, that you guys enjoy and that you guys understand. And if you would, if you have questions for us, post them in the comments below. It, it, it's a work in progress, just like the Discord, just like everything. So bear with us. Uh, we like, we have a north and south vibe going. Uh, we want to do that. We want to get to your stuff. I, I would like to open this way. You touched on something just... In your day-to-day -day carry, what do you carry, and are you concerned about getting caught with it? Okay, so what do I carry? Well, that's a perfect segue to get into your video, because you did uh, What's in Your Pocket today. So what's in my pocket today? So I have a, I don't know which camera to show it to you. See it? CRKT? The pillar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks to you, obviously, and thanks to... Uh, Donnie B all day. Donnie B all day. How did I do that, Donnie? So basically, <laughs> it's life. let me tell you something. This guy can pick out knives, man, because this is this thing is fantastic. I mean, I honestly, this does not leave my pocket ever since um, I purchased it through your associates link over there. I mean, this thing is fantastic. So I love this. And the second thing in my pocket is my Cold Steel AD10. We all know that Scab is a big lover of uh, the AD10, and I am too. Um, as far as carrying, now, this particular AD10 is actually, it's under four inches, okay? So this can actually be carried, okay? Now, it all depends on basically who finds you with it, but anything under four inches in New York State is considerable, considered to be able to be carried. Now, obviously, the pillar is no problem. I mean, this is a nice small blade. I'm much more comfortable carrying this. But anything above the four-inch mark, uh, is going to be considered an illegal carry in New York State. So keep that in mind, guys. If you live in New York, look at your state regulations as far as what you can carry. And you got to be selective of where you, I mean, where you're carrying it to. You know, you know, like you're going to put it into your pocket when you go into a concert or something like that, and they're going to search you and have metal detectors and find it, and you can get into a lot of trouble. But, you know, everyday carry, if it's under four inches, I don't think you should have a big problem. That, that, I'm glad you touched on that. In Florida, it's four and a half inches. And just kind of to touch on that, I, I've got my pillar 
as well. It's something I carry every day, and, and D-Bad hit a home run with this one. He really did. Um, I, I touched on a video not long ago about my buddy Josh, uh, and, and Josh has given me full disclosure to, to speak for him and on his behalf. Uh, he's looking at two years. Uh, he was carrying a Voyager, five and a half inches. The law in Florida is four and a half. Like Joe said, look up your state. Now, there are mitigating factors there with Josh, just kind of who he's affiliated and associated with. But still, it was a pocket knife he uses for work. It's five and a half inch. I love cold steel. Joe hit it. Joe loves cold steel. And one of the things that I have actually uh, in my pocket today is my Formax. I carry several, but my Formax is just one, uh, and it's a four inch blade. I'm okay with it. But, but I, I want to say this before we go. This is going to be a common sense deal. Joe speaks with a lot of common sense, as do I. Guys, this right here, this right here don't cut it. And Joe, one of the things I'm doing is, you'll hear this a lot down here. Well, if it fits across the palm of your hand, that's the dumbest ass thing ever. The law in Florida is four and a half inches. It, and let me say this, in the comments, look up your state law and put it in. Uh, there are a few that don't have any, so that would be interesting to see. Um, but that's one of the things we'll talk about here and go into here. And can you carry it? I don't. What What is your experience with cold steel as far as carrying? One more thing that you should consider also: um, if they're folders or automatics. Yeah. yeah. Automatics are completely prohibited in New York State. Okay. You can't okay. have an automatic opener. They're legal so in Florida. Completely, you cannot have an automatic opener. So that's, even if it's a smaller blade, if it's an automatic open, for whatever reason, it's easy to do, to, to engage or whatever, uh, that's automatically, you know, prohibited. Depend, it doesn't even matter the size if it's an automatic open. The an actual there. manual folder under a certain inches, a certain amount of inches on the blade, it should be okay. Fixed blades, forget about it. I mean, you know, everybody's had, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would love to be carrying my Bowie in a park right now and I'd see what the hell happens to me. So uh, please guys keep, consider that and, you know, protect yourself. You know, we all love knives, but we all live in a reality world here and uh, you have to consider what you're carrying, where you're carrying it and uh, what, how you get caught with it. So please keep that in mind. Um, you know, we endorse all types of knives, all, all types of sizes. But you need to be responsible yourself and see what you're able to carry or not. So that's that's a great point, Scott. The other thing in New York City or New York State, plastic knives are illegal. Really? Yeah, and that's something to know because Cold Steel makes a line of plastic knives. Now, this isn't a Cold Steel show. I'm just saying they make some plastic knives that you can defend yourself. Not great cutters. They're not meant to be. They're stabbers. They're self-defense. They are illegal in New York. That's one thing to know. They're, they're legal here. Um, and another thing to cover, everybody's seen my ballistic knife. The ballistic knife is illegal to own, illegal to sell, illegal to have. Uh, and that all goes back to the movie Commando, believe it or not. So, you know, I, I get guys asking me, Joe, you know, hey, will you sell it? Can, no, no. Um, it, it doesn't leave the house. It's here, and and as goofy as I can be with stuff, two years is a ton of time, and anybody that tells you it's not has never done any any time. I have it, thank the Lord. But just like Joe said, man, know your laws, be responsible. In Florida, we carry fixed blades. Y'all know I carry the preacher a lot, and and it's a joy to do. But know your law. And, and have sense about it because not only will they confiscate it you can do some time I was going to ask you too on the, on the cold steels I know you carry that 8010 and I, I do too right. you know there's the, there's the Formax there's the 8010 there's the Ultimate Hunter um, I sent Isaac the Noob several uh, cold steels to play with because he said he didn't have any mm -hmm. and I know he's carried that Ultimate Hunter a good bit um, and so that's kind of a family. I know like the 80-20. Joe, how does that 80-10 carry in your pocket? How do you like that? Because a lot of people want to bash, call oh, it's too big, it's this, it's that. What, what's your feelings on that? 
The AD10, there's something about the AD10 as far as how it's carried. I mean, just basically the smooth grind on the, on the G10 handle, it really slides in and out of the pocket. And a lot of people have complained about the uh, clip being too tight. I have absolutely no issues with this clip okay. because sure. you know what? I'd rather receive it tight than receive it loose because it's going to wear in time. Absolutely. And what I did was I kind of just kind of took like a letter opener with a little piece of paper and I kind of wedged it up a little bit and it's it's perfectly fine. This thing goes in and out of my pocket extremely well. It's, you know, the perfect weight, perfect size where it's not uncomfortable. Obviously, listen, if you're going to carry this in like, you know, shorts and jogging pants, it's going to droop down a little bit. That's why I have yeah. summer knives. Yeah. But this, I think, carries extremely well in my pocket. I have absolutely no problem with this at all. Yeah. That, well, and that, I'm glad you mentioned that because I carry the Raja 2, the, the XL Espada. Um, everybody knows I carry them, but I don't just do that for show. I enjoy carrying. And, and, and most of the people I found that want a bat or that's too big, or they have never used one. Um, I, I have this one here. I made sure I set up several around me, but I have a cold steel here, the the, uh, the Bush Ranger, S35VN, Grippy G, all that. This one, the clip's the same way, but I do what you do. I pry it open. Um, I'm not gonna complain and bitch that it's too tight. Like you said, I, if it's loose, you lose it. But this is a good carry. You don't know it's there. Uh, the AD10 I like. The um, another favorite of mine, real quick. And I, I was going to ask you about this because I don't know how New York would feel about the Tiger Claw. Is that is that walking the line? Is that what's the actual length of the blade? I believe it's a three and a half inch blade. That's a tough one. I don't know. Maybe because the, the curvature is made, it looks like it can stay. I, you know what it is? It, it really honestly depends on who catches you with it. If you yeah. have a police officer who basically is looking at it and saying, you know what? That doesn't look good. I'm going to bring you in on it. You know, it, yeah. it all depends on who. I, you got to really just use common sense as far as where you're carrying these things around. If you're in a place with a lot of, you know, big public place, now that COVID's a little getting, you know, going into the back, you know, pocket a little bit, you know, uh, public places are opening up. There's a lot, you know, venues are opening up to a lot more people. And now we're going to be frequenting these places. And it, you got to use common sense as far as where you are and what you're carrying. I think something like that might be a little bit of an issue. If, uh, if I know New York cops, I think they might look at that and say, no, nah, no way. You're not carrying that shit in here. Well, that, that, that's an important point that you brought up that I wanted to touch on. There's in Florida, can't speak to anything else, but I can tell you in Florida, the other side of the law is this. There's a there's a little written caveat to it, and it says if you're carrying it with malice, and that's what. But again, it's all you know. It's all what you're doing. Joe hit it on the head. Don't carry one to the airport. Don't carry one to a, a bar. I bounced for 20 years. I, now in the in the South, it's different. If a dude come in with a nice pocket knife. We let him keep it because it was it's mainly because he was going to use it for a can of dip or he's working with it or something like that now, i can tell you if you walk in with this we wouldn't let you come in with it you know we'd hold it for in the south it's just different we're not going to take your stuff you know somebody would but then somebody would be waiting on them. but something like this because and as much as i love this and i use it every day i i, I i'll say this and i'll make it quick I worked with a gentleman at Home Depot who was a uh, officer in, in Rhode Island for many, many, many years. And so I just took some knives in one day and I said, tell me what you, and he's a laid back, he said, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, the, the Espada, he said, that would be an issue. Just, he said, come on, man, that's a pocket sword and, and the Tiger Claw. And he said, my, my thing with you on the Tiger Claw would be what would be your intent with it? He said, you know, he was fine with the Formax. He was fine with the Bush Ranger, the Avispa, the Pillar, fine with him. But he, you know, and, and, and Reese is a good dude, but he's just like, look, man, some of this you got to use. And I think we've said this probably five or six times now, and you're going to hear this a bunch as we go, is common sense. You know, you, you, you do a lot of common sense things. So do I. And, and I'm a huge advocate of common sense you'll never get in trouble for doing the right thing or using common sense good advice gab that's exactly what you got to do common sense is is foremost in this and you know what in in 
in future videos, I also want to touch upon the fact I, I review katana, I review all different types of swords. Now, what I really would like to push the emphasis on, when I tell you how well the sword is made, or how well sharpened it is, or how well it can cut, keep in mind, guys, swords are used for practice cutting. It's called Tamashigiri, okay? You should never, you should always take very special care in where you use these swords, around people. Um, I mean, they could, they're deadly, deadly item. They're deadly uh, weapons. That's what they are, the way they're made. And you got to be take special care into, in terms of how you use them, where you use them. Um, you can definitely hurt yourself, kill yourself, or kill somebody else with them. So be very, very careful when you're using these swords, okay? So that's something I'm gonna to touch upon, you know, on later videos as well, but in relation to what we're talking about with the knives. Well, and, and I'll say this too, swords, from what you've said, from uh, Eric Hussein and, and, and watching you guys, the Sultan of Slash, they're expensive. And so if you're out bebopping around, you know, you can mess one, not only hurt yourself, you can mess one up, you can get one confiscated, and you can make yourself a target because they're not cheap. So again, just if you practice, I'd say practice in your backyard or in your home and use common sense and be safe. Be very careful where you go with them in public places. Make sure there's nobody around. There's no regulations as far as where you can use these things. And uh, and then you'll be fine. I mean, you just, you got to plan ahead. You can you, you have to understand owning, owning these knives and swords are a responsibility. Okay. You have a responsibility when you carry these things around and when you use them to cut. So you have to basically adhere to that responsibility and be very smart as far as where you're using them, how you're using them and in what places. So that's, that's the best way that I can describe it. Yeah. And, and to content creators, you also have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Um, one of the things is I don't heavily edit my videos and I say to show you my screw ups, we have a responsibility to let let everybody know they're dangerous and they should be you know the thing is a kid what were you told don't run with a knife don't run with scissors don't run so as content creators let me encourage you to you don't have to make a big deal out of it you don't have to talk around your ass for 30 minutes like i do but we have a responsibility to let people know hey we do this a lot and i guarantee you joe has his hands are cut to hell and back mine are cut to hell and back all yeah all content creators if you've done it long enough you're cut up and and show folks that and let folks know that's a reality absolutely now we're not going to like preach on this every single video i think it's a great way for us to open this thing up to let people know as we start this video up and start talking about our passion for knives and swords and different products on the market uh we wanted to i think this was a perfect way to kind of open up this video and let people know these are the disclosures. This is what you need to be careful about. We'll mention it from time to time, but we're not going to hop on it, but it's something that you guys should know without a doubt. Yeah, and, and the shows will, a lot of what you guys want to talk about, we'll talk about. We want to focus, I want to make sure we focus a lot on swords, uh, not because Joe's half and I'm half, but because I actually want to learn. Um, and I've told you this, I'd like to do, when I'm thinking about maybe we do one, where Joe goes through, I, I want to know the names to all the katana and some history on it. Uh, so whatever you guys want to see, that's what we'll do. I also want to encourage everybody to be subscribed to both channels. That's what this is for. Um, we've talked honestly and openly. We both want to grow our channels. And, you know, don't be surprised if you see some people on here you know. Uh, D-Bad comes to mind. I'd like to get maybe DJ Horn. And let me say this, the interview that Joe has coming up, guys, we need to make a concerted effort to make sure everybody's there and, and support that video. You don't real, you guys don't realize how big of a deal this is. Uh, Walter is an icon in the sword thing and, and I wanna make sure, I can't wait for it. I know Joe's pumped up about it. I think you've got a, what, a, inter, a, a pre meeting today? I have, uh, yeah, Walter, Walter, uh, Walter Soros is, he isn't, he's definitely an American icon. And, and the great thing about him is, is the fact that he's an American bladesmith creating Asian swords or katana, which is something that is a commodity today. Cause most of the, 
our Asian swords, our katana and Chinese swords and all that are obviously made in, in China, Korea. And uh, many people have asked me, you know, what about an American bladesmith? Well, here it is, guys. I mean, here's an amazing American bladesmith. Um, besides the fact that he's an American, has not really not much to do with the fact that he's amazing at what he does. But yes, you're right. I have a, um, a conference call with him coming up after five o'clock today. And um, I'm going to be discussing with him as far as setting up a date actually for the interview and uh, marking our calendars for it and maybe just start and then we're going to start organizing the content and i actually want to thank all you guys who left questions for walter on that video uh the pre-video that i made up i really appreciate you guys contributing to it it's excellent it's going to make a really great segment on the uh on the interview so i can get a i can have your voice uh in the video itself and be able to ask Walter questions direct. And it was actually some interesting um, contributions there as far as questions are concerned. So uh, I thank you guys for really uh, stepping up and leaving those questions for him because that's definitely going to make it part of the video. And that's part of the content that I'm going to start organizing up. So um, on Discord or something like that, if you're not a member, please join up. Like Scab said, I'm going to be actually putting in progress as far as when the interview is going to be coming give you a status as far as the dates that are that we're looking at so this way you guys can mark your calendars and know exactly when the video is going to come up and please subscribe to both of us and hit the bell icon it's very important guys when you hit when you subscribe to somebody and you have that bell you have to hit all so you get notified whenever a video shows up uh, a lot of people don't know that they just subscribe to people and they don't hit the bell icon to set to all and they don't really know when the uh, videos are a uh, uh, you know, going in you know, live on YouTube. So keep that in mind. And uh, I'll try to communicate out to you as far as what, you know, the status of when the interview is going to happen. But I think I should have a better idea about this, uh, about that date uh, later today. Yeah. I, and again, I'm excited about that. And listen, speaking on the Discord, this, the Discord, the server, I guess is mine, but it's yours. It's, it's Joe's. It's, and I cannot say that enough. Use it, use it, use it. That's what we want to do. That's what Joe and I are trying to do is build community. That's what the discourse for. Use it. You know, I, I understand that some people don't want to be tied to social media. And I, dude, I get it. But you can jump on there just about any time of day and there's going to be discussions. We're going to post some of the videos that we do there. So please use it. And uh, I, I, let me touch on this real quick because I know we're kind of cruising along here. Um, you had a couple packages come in. Yep. Let, let's talk about what you got coming up, and then uh, I'll talk about what I, and then we'll start to wrap it if you want. Absolutely. Right before yeah. this video, I started organizing this video. Uh, UPS rang my bell, and I got some packages in, so I'll show that to you. Give me a second. All right. So for all you Katana people, you know exactly, exactly what this is. Okay, so this is a new Katana from a custom forge uh, that I just got from uh, Sino Swords. And uh, I'm gonna be a review coming up on that pretty soon. Um, and then I also got a box of tatami mats. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a review on that as well. And actually, uh, these tatami mats came from Amazon. So I'm actually really excited to put in a review of that and see how that um, how they pan out and you know so those are two upcoming videos coming up with this uh, katana from J Crew Swords, Sino Swords, and also the tatami match. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we, we've talked at length and and we'll start to bring it, it guys. Basically, what I got coming is is my stuff. Uh, we're going to do more testing and I, I want to take use this format too to kind of explain. When I test a knife, I'm testing the knife for actual use. That's it. I'm not going to do anything spectacular with it. I'm not going to hit it with a hammer. I'm not going to do anything like that. But what I got coming up, I've got a couple pocket knives I want to review. Um, I know I got one coming in the mail. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that, man. Um, one year anniversary. Congratulations, Gab. One year anniversary. That, you, got, yeah. you, you guys did a fantastic job. And uh, we'll all... We're, we're all unified, really proud of you for what you've achieved and your voice and just your tremendous personality that you kind of put out on each and every video. Um, and I just want to tell you, it is an honor for me to actually be speaking to you on this venue. I was really excited when we decided to do this together. Well, likewise, man, and I'm excited. I, I think we got big things coming. Let me, let me hit this before we kind of um, 
June 23rd, Wednesday night, we're going to do 8 o'clock. We're going live. I want to do that. I, I want to say this, though, and I've, I've kind of mentioned this to Joe. I've mentioned this to a few people. If over the next couple days you see me doing a live, feel free to jump in. Just like this is a test video here, and this is kind of a see what you guys think here. Uh, we're going to go live and just kind of test it out for four or five minutes. But if you see me, feel free to jump in, say hello, because um, I want to make sure when Wednesday night comes, we're ready to go. And I am, I am looking forward to that. Megatron's looking forward to that. And uh, that's about it, man. I, I love y'all. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take off with this. I'm excited to be doing this with Joe. I think it's a great thing. And uh, like everything else, I'm really hoping you guys support us. I know you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really amped about the uh, the live coming up and a lot of things coming up on our channel. Uh, we're trying, always trying to ask some new things. So just hang out, you know, be patient. We're trying this out. I'm hoping it works out. Um, I should be airing this if it if I cut it up and everything works out. So if it's airing it, then I guess it worked. So, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, so Scab, let's close it up, man. Hey, my guy Mikey, whom I love says it best, never give up, never surrender, and everything will be all right. I'm Scab. You're not. You're not. I'm Joe Love. You're not. And we gone, son. Later, guys. Thanks for watching. Enjoyed it, Joe. Thank you.